away the time, and then the moon, like to a silver bow, new bends in heaven, shall behold the night of our solemnities. Go, go straight. Start the Athenian youth from Americans. Awaken the pert and nimble spirit of mirth. Hippolyta, I woo thee with my sword, and lend thy love renew the injuries. But I will wed thee in another way, with pomp, with triumph, and with reveling. Happy be Theseus, not renowned in doom. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation come I with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Set forth, Demetrius, my noble lord, this man hath my descendant. Set forth, Lysander, and my gracious suit. This man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. And if so, he will not hear consent to marry with Demetrius. I give the ancient privilege of Athens that as she is mine, I may dispose of her, either to this fine gentleman or to her death, according to our law. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, for maid. To you, your father should be as a god. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. I would my father look but with my eye. Rather, with your eye must his judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I may be bold, but I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. To die the death or to abjure for us the society of men. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord. My soul consents not to your sovereignty. pro life, sweet Hermia, and Lysander, yield my crazed title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? Scorn, <laughs> Lysander. Do that he hath my love, and what is mine my love shall render. I am my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his, and which is more than all we both could ever be. I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why shall I not then prosecute my right? Demetrius, all about this to his head, swore love to Nader's daughter, Helena, and won her soul. And she, sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes, dotes in idolatry upon this spotted and inconstant man. <laughs> I must admit, I have heard so much, and with Demetrius thought who spoke thereof. But being overfull of self bears my mind to lose it. But Demetrius, <laughs> come, and come, Aegeus, you shall go with me. For you, fair Hermia, look you fit yourself to your father's fancies, or else the law of Athens yields you up, to death or to a vow of a single life. Come, Hippolyta, what cheer, my love? So pale, how chance the roses there do fade so fast. They like for want of rain. I could well fatigue from the tempest of my eye. I need, for aught that I can ever read, can ever hear my tale or history. The course of true love never did run smooth. Oh, how to choose love by another's eye. Hear me, Hermia, I have a widow aunt, a dowager, from Athens is her house, remote seven leagues. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee. And to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, then steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood a league without the town, where I did meet thee once with Helena. There I will stay for thee. My good Lysander, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest foe, in that same place that thou hast appointed me tomorrow, truly will I meet with thee. Keep promise, love. Look, here comes Helena. God speed, fair Helena, with her away. Call you me fair? That fair again, I'm saying. Demetrius loves your fair, O oh, happy fair. Sickness is catching, oh, or favor so. Yours would I catch, fair Hermia, ere I go. Oh, teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers with such affection move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. Oh, his folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty, with that fault were mine. Oh, take comfort. He no more shall see my face. Lysander, I myself will fly this place. Helen, to our minds we will unfold, through Athens gates we devise to steal. And in the wood where often you and I, upon faint primrose beds were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of the council suite, there Lysander and myself shall meet. Farewell, sweet pretty fellow, pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Helena, adieu, as you on him, Demetrius, still taunt you. What of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all but he do know. Love the 
looks not with the eyes, but with the mind, and therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eyne, he hailed down oaths that he were only mine. And when this hail, some heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolved, and showers of oaths did melt. Go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night. Pursue her, and for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But here in me none, to enrich my pain, to have his sights thither and back again. and so grow to a point. Mary, our play is the most lamentable comedy and the most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work, I assure you, and a Mary. Now, call forth your actors by the scroll. Ambassadors, spread yourselves. Answer as I call you, Nick Bottom the Weaver. Ready, name what part I am for, and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. Well, what is Pyramus? A lover? Or a tyrant. A lover that kills himself most gallant for love. That will ask some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. I will condole in some measure. <laughs> to the rest. And yet, my cheap humor is for a tyrant. I could play Hercules rarely, or a part to tear a cat in to make all split. Listen here. <clears throat> the raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates, and Phoebus' car shall shine from afar and break and mar the foolish fight. <laughs> this was lofty. Now name the rest of the players. Francis Blue, the bellows vendor. Here, Peter Quince, Luke, you must take Thisbe on you. What is Thisbe, the wandering knight? It is the lady that Hermes must love. Nay, Faith, let me not play a woman. I have a beard coming. <laughs> that is all one. You shall play in a mess, and you shall speak as small as you will. And I might hide my face. Let me play Thisbe, too. I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Thisbe, Thisbe. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. No, no, you must play here, Miss, and with me, this week. Well, proceed. Robin Starbling, the tailor. Here, Peter Prince. Robin Starbling, you must play his mother. Tom Snout, the tinker. Here, Peter Prince. You must play Turnus's father. Myself, Thisby's father. Snug Runner, you the lion's part, and I hope here is a play for this. Have you the lion's part ready? Pray you, this be. Give it to me, for I'm slow to study. You may do it extemporary, for it is nothing but roaring. Let me play the lion, too! I will roar you that I will do any man's heart good to hear. I will roar you that I will make any deuce any man say, Let him roar again! Let him roar again! And you should do it too terribly that you would fright the Duchess and the ladies that they would shriek, and that were enough to hang us all. That would hang us every mother's son. But... I will aggravate my voice, <laughs> so that I will roar you as for any suckling dove. I will roar you as for any nightingale. <laughs> you can play no part but Pyramus. For Pyramus is a sweet-faced man, a proper man, as one should see in a summer day. A lovely gentleman like man, therefore you must needs play Pyramus. Well, I will undertake it. <laughs> Master, hear your part, and I must entreat you, request you, and desire you to come and by tomorrow night. 
and meet me at the palace wood, a mile without the town, by moonlight. There will we rehearse. There we will meet, and we will rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains, be perfect. Adieu. At the Duke's Oak we meet. Enough, hold or cut bowstrings. <laughs> Fuck, come hither. Fetch me that 
flower. The herb I showed thee once, the juice of it on sleeping eyelids lay, will cause a man, or a woman, madly joked upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb, and be thou here again, ere the Leviathan can swim a league. I'll, I'll put a girdle round about the earth in 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Having once this juice, oh, it's Shaitani when she's asleep and drop the liquor out in her eyes. The next thing she waking looks upon, be it on lion, bear, or wolf, or bull, on meddling monkey, or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. And ere I take this charm from off her sight, I'll make her under up her page to me. But who comes here? I'm invisible, and will overhear their confidence. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia, the one I'll slay? slayeth me. Thou <laughs> told me they were stolen unto this wood. Hence, get thee gone, and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant. It's <laughs> Do I speak you fair, or rather do I not inflame this truth? Tell you, I do not do a cannot love you. And even for that do I love you the more. I am your spaniel, and Demetrius, the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Use me but as your spaniel. Spurn me, strike me, neglect me, lose me. Only give me leave, unworthy as I am, to follow you. What worser place can I beg in your love, and yet a place of high respect with me, than to be used as you use your dog? Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you! You do impeach your modesty too much to leave the city and commit yourself into the hands of one who loves you not. Your virtue is my privilege. For that it is not night when I do see your face. Therefore I think I am not in the night, nor doth this wood lack world of company. For you in my respect are all the world. Then how can it be said I am alone when all the world is here to look on me? I will run from thee and hide me in the brakes and leave thee to the mercy of the wild beasts. The wildest hath not such a heart as you. Run when you will. The story shall be changed. Apollo fly, then Daphne holds the chase. I will not say thy questions. Let me go. Or if thou follow me, do not believe that I will do thee mischief in this wood. I, in the temple, the town, the fields, you do me mischief. Fight, Demetrius. Your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be wooed, and we're not made to woo. Roses and with eglantine, there sleeps Titania, sometime in the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight, and with the juice of this I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it and seek through this grove a sweet Athenian lady, this love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on. Affect it with some care, that he may prove more fond on her than she upon her love. And look thou meet me ere the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord, your servant shall do so.
happiest when thou doest wake, do it for thy true love take, love and languish for his sake, be an ounce or cat or bear, when thou wake, it is thy dear, wake when some vile thing is near. Demetrius, oh how fit a word that vile name does perish on my sword. Do not say so, Lysander. Say not so. What, though he love your Hermia? Lord, what though? Yet Hermia still loves you. Then be content. Content with Hermia? No, I do repent. The tedious minute I with her have spent. <laughs> not Hermia, but Helena I love. Who will not change a rain for a dove? The will of a man is by his reason swayed, and reason says that you are the worthier maid. Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When at your hands did I deserve the scorn? Is not, en is not enough, young man, that I did never know, nor never can, <coughs> deserve a sweet look from Demetrius's eye, but you must flout my insufficiencies? Good troth, you do me wrong. Good sooth, you do. In such disdainful manner, me to woo. But fare you well, perforce. I must confess. I thought you lord of more true gentleness. She sees not Hermia. Hermia, sleep thou there, and never mayst thou come Lysander near. For as the surfeit of the sweetest things, the deepest loathing to the stomach brings. So as I suspect my heresy of all be hated, but most of me. 
all my powers, address your love and might to honor Helen and to be her knight. <laughs> Pyramus and Thisbe that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw a sword and kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. How answer you that? Fire Lakin, a parlous sphere. I believe you must leave the killing out when all is done. Not a wit. I have a device to make all well. Write me a prologue and let the prologue seem to say we will do no harm with our swords and that Pyramus is not killed indeed. And for the more better assurance, so that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom the Weaver. This will put them out of fear. Will not the ladies be appearing to the lion? I fear it, I promise you. <laughs> a lion amongst ladies is a most dreadful thing. Nay, he himself must speak through, saying, Fair ladies, I would wish you, or I would request you, or I would entreat you not to fear, not to tremble, my life yours. If you think I come hither as a lion, it were pity of my life. Nay, I am no such thing. I am a man, as other men are, and there indeed let him plainly state his name and say he is Snug the Joiner. Well, it shall be so. But there is two hard things. That is, to bring the moonlight into the chamber, for, you know, Pyramus and Thisbe did meet by moonlight. Doth the moon shine, the night we play our play? A calendar, a calendar, look beyond that, find out moonshine, find out moonshine. Yes, it doth shine that night. Why then? You may leave a casement, a casement in the great chamber window where we are to play open, and the moon may shine in at the casement. Aye, or else one must come in with a bush of thorns and a lanthorn, and say he is to present the person of moonshine. Then there is another thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber, for you know, Pyramus and Thisbe did talk through the chink of a wall. You can never bring in a wall. What say you, Bottom? Some man or other must present wall, and he may hold his fingers thus, and through that cranny shall Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. If that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down, every mother's son, and reverse your part. And we swagger in here, so near the cradle of the fairy queen. What? A play towards? I'll be an auditor, an actor too, perhaps, if I see cause. Speak, Pyramus. This be. Stand forth. This be <laughs> thy flowers of odor, savor, sweet. Odor. Odor. Odor, savor, sweet. So have thy breath, my dearest, this be dear. But hark, a voice. Stay down with your while, and by and by I will to thee appear. A stranger Pyramus than e'er played here. Uh, must I speak now? I very you must, for you must understand he goes but to see a noisy herd, and he's come to her. Most radiant Pyramus, most lily white of hue, I'll meet thee, Pyramus, at Nini's tomb. Nina's tomb, man, why? <laughs> you must not see that yet. That you answer to Pyramus. You speak all your lines at once, cues and all. Pyramus, enter. Your cue is past. It is never tired. Oh, as true as truest horse that yet would never tire. If I were fair to speak, I were only thine. Oh, monstrous. Oh, strange. We are haunted. Grim masters, fly masters, help. I'll follow you only to a why do they run away? This is a 
navy of them to make me a beard. Oh, Madam, now I've changed. What do I see on me? What do you see? You see an accent of your own, do you? <laughs> their knavery. This is to make an ass of me. <laughs> to fright me if they could. But I will not stir from this place. Do what they can. I will walk up and down here. And I shall sing. So that they shall hear I am not afraid. <laughs> <clears throat> the owls so cock so back of you with horns and tawny will. The cross will win this old torture, the man with the right to play! Yes, the angel awakes me from my flowery bed. <laughs> I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. My ear is much enamored to thy note. So is my eye enthralled to thy shape. And thy fair virtue's force, her force doth move me on first view to say, to swear, I love thee. <laughs> Methinks you should have a little reason for that. <laughs> and yet, to say the truth, um, love and reason do keep little company together nowadays. Thou art as wise as our beautiful. Not so, neither. <laughs> Though if I had enough wit to get out of this wood, I had enough to serve my own turn. Out of this wood do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. <laughs> I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state. And I do love thee, therefore go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee, and I will purge thy mortal grossness. <laughs> so thou shalt like an airy spirit go. Peace blossom, cobweb, moth, mustard seed. Rain and ice. And ice. And the where shall we go? Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Feed him with apricots and dewberries. To have my love to bed and to arise. And pluck the wings from painted butterflies. To fan the moonbeams from his sleeping eyes. Nod him else and do him courtesies. Hail, mortal. Hail. 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 I cry your worship's mercy heartily. I beseech your worship's name. Kaba. I shall desire you for acquaintance, good master Kaba. If I cut my finger, I shall make bold with you. Uh, your name I beseech you, sir. Peace, Blossom. I pray you, commend me to Mistress Squash, your mother. Uh, your name, good sir. Mustard tea. Good master mustard seed, I promise you, your kindred had made my eye water ere now. I shall desire you for acquaintance, good master mustard seed. Come, lead him to my bower. The moon, methinks, looks with a watery eye, and when she weeps, weeps every little flower, lamenting some enforced chastity. <laughs> Tie up my love's tongue, bring him silently. <laughs>
and kill me too. It cannot be, but thou hast murdered him. So should the murderer look, so dead, so grim. So should the murdered look, and so should I, pierced through the heart with your stern cruelty. What's this to my Lysander? Where is he? Ah, oh, good Demetrius, wilt thou give him me? I had rather give his carcass to my house. Out, dog, out, cur! Thou drivest me past the bounds of maiden's patience. Hast thou slain him, then henceforth never be numbered among men. You spend your passion on a misprized mood. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead, for all that I can tell. I pray thee, then tell me that he is well. And if I could, what should I get there for? A privilege never to see me more. <laughs> From thy hated presence part I so. See me no more, whether he be dead or no. There is no following her in this fierce vein. Here, therefore, for a while will I remain. So sorrow's heaviness doth heavier grow, for debt that bankrupt sleep doth sorrow low, which in some slight measure it will pay, and for his tender here I make some stay. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite, and laid the love juice on some true love's sight. Of thy misprovision free force must ensue. Some true love turned it out a false turn true. Then fate or rules that one man holding forth a million fell confound thee notes on us. About the wood go swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens look thou find. By some illusion see thou bring her here. I'll charm his eye again she do appear. I go, I go, look how I go, swifter than an arrow from a tartar's bow. <laughs> Flower of this purple dye, hit with Cupid's archery, sick an apple of his eye, when his love he doth despy. Let her shine as gloriously as the Venus of the sky. When thou wakest, if she be by, beg of her for remedy. Captain of our fairy band, Helena is here at hand, and the youth mistook by me, pleading for a lover's fee. Shall we therefore pet and see? Lord, what fools these mortals be! <laughs> Stand aside, noise the gate will cause Demetrius to wake. That will do at once with one? That must needs be sport alone! <laughs> what do you think I should go and scorn? Scorn and which never come. You do advance your cunning more and more. When truth kills truth, oh devilish holy fray, these vows are Hermia's. Will you give her or Wait, oath with oath, and you will nothing weigh. I had no judgment when her I swore. Nor none in my mind, now you give her or Demetrius loves her, and he loves not you. Oh, <gasps> oh Helena, goddess, nymph, Perfect. Why? <laughs> to what, my love, shall I compare thine eye? Crystal is muddy. Oh, how ripe and show thy lips, those kissing cherries, tempting grow. When thou holdst up thy hand, oh, let me kiss this princess of pure white, the seal of bliss. <laughs> <laughs> Why 
Why should he stay whom love doth press to go? What love could press Lysander from my side? Lysander's love that would not let him by. Fair Helena, who more you killed the knight than all you fiery o's and eyes of light. Why seeks thou me? Could not this make thee know? That hate I bear thee made me leave thee so. You speak not as you think, it cannot be. Lo, she is one of this confederacy. Now I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Injurious Hermia, most ungrateful maid, have you conspired, have you, with these contrived to bait me with this foul derision? Is all the counsel that we two have shared the sisters' vows, the hours that we have spent, when we did chid the hasty good of time for parting us. Oh, is it all forgot? All school days friendship, childhood innocence? And will you rent our ancient love asunder to join with men in scorning our poor friend? It is not friendly, tis not maidenly. Our sex as well as I may chide you for it, though I alone do feel the injury. I am amazed by your passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems that you scorn me. Have you not set Lysander as in scorn to follow me and praise my eyes and face and make your other love, Demetrius, to call me <laughs> goddess, nymph, divine, and rare, precious celestial? Wherefore speaks he this to her he hates? And wherefore doth Lysander deny your love so rich within his soul to tender me <laughs> affection? But by your setting on, by your consent, I understand not what you mean by this. I do persever. Counterfeit sad looks make mouths upon me when I turn my back. We get each other, <laughs> hold the sweet jest up. But fare ye well, tis partly my own fault, which death or absence soon shall remedy. Say, gentle Helena, hear my excuse. My love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Oh, excellent! Hey, do not scorn her so. If she cannot entreat, I can compel. Thou canst compel no more than she entreat. Helena, I love thee. <laughs> By my life I do. <laughs> As for my back, which I will lose for thee, to prove a false and that I love thee not. I say I love thee more than he can do. <laughs> if thou says so, withdraw and prove it too. Quick, come. My sender, where to tend all this? Hang off, thou cat, thou burr. <laughs> Vile thing let loose. I will shake thee from me like a serpent. Why are you grown so rude? What changes this sweet love? Outloathe medicine, oh, hated potion. Hence. Hate me? Wherefore? Oh, me. What news, my love? I'm not I of Hermia. Are not you Lysander? Why have you left me? Oh, the gods forbid in earnest, shall I say? I, by my life, and never deep, did desire to see thee more. Therefore, be out of hope, of question, of doubt. Be certain. Nothing truer, tis no jest, that I do hate thee and love Helena. Oh, <laughs> me, you juggler, you canker blossom, you thief of love. <laughs> what, have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? Fine, thing. have you no modesty, no maiden shame, no touch of bashfulness? What, will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Fie, fie, you counterfeit. You puppet, you! Puppet? Why so? Aye, that way goes the game. Now I perceive she hath made compare between our statures. She hath urged her height, and with her personage, her tall personage, her height, her sooth, she hath prevailed with him. And are you grown so high in his esteem because I am so dwarfish and so low? How low am I, thou painted maypole? Speak, how low am I? I am not yet so low that my nails can reach into thy eyes. I pray you, will you mock me, gentlemen? Let her not hurt me. I was never cursed. I have no gift at all in shrewishness. I am a right maid for my cowardice. Let her not hurt me. You perhaps may think because she is something lower than myself that I can match her. Lower, Argus. Good Hermia, do not be so bitter with me. I evermore did love you, Hermia. Did ever conjure you. Never wronged you, save that in love with you, Demetrius, I told him of yourself in this wood. He followed you, for love I followed him. And now, so you will let me to Athens, will I bear my folly back and follow you no further. Let me go. You see how simple and how fond I am. Why get you gone? 
Who is that hinders you? A foolish heart that I do leave here behind. What, who blessed anger? With Demetrius. Be not afraid. She shall not harm thee, Helena. No, sir, she shall not, though you take her part. Oh, when she is mad, she is keen and shrewd. She was a vixen when she went to school, and though she be but little, she is fierce. Little again! Nothing but low and little! Why will you suffer her to flood me thus? Let me come to her! Get you gone, you dwarf! You minimus of pigrate our grass made. You bead, you acorn. <laughs> <laughs> now fall thou, dear. Try and who's right of thine or mine is most than Helena's. Bolo, may I'll go with thee. She finds <laughs> only. You mistress, all this coil is long of you, nay, go not back. I will not trust you, I, nor longer stay in your cursed company. Your hands than mine are quicker for a fray. My legs are longer, though, to run away. <laughs> I am amazed and know not what to say. This is thy negligence. Still thou mistakest quite, or else commit thy knaveries willfully. Believe me, King of Chattels, I mistook. And so far I'm glad it so did soar, as this there jangling I esteem a sport. Thou seest these lovers seek a place to fight. Higher, therefore, Robin, overcast the night, and lead these testy rivals so astray that one come not within another's way, till o'er their brows death counterfeiting sleep, with laden legs and batty wings doth creep. Then crush this herb into lie Sander's eyes, whose liquor hath this virtuous property, when next they wake, all this derision shall seem a dream and fruitless to you. While I in this affair do thee employ, I'll to my queen and beg her envious boy. And then I will her charmed eye release from monsters' view, and all things shall be peace. My furry lord, this must be done with pace, for nights with dragons cut the clouds full fast, and yonder shines a roar's harbinger. Haste, make no delay. We may affect this business yet ere day. <laughs> Up and down, up and down, I will lead them up and down. I am feared in field and town. Goblin lead them up and down. Here comes one. Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now. Here, villain, drawn and ready. I will be with thee straight. Follow me then to plain your ground. Lysander, speak again. Thou run away, thou coward, art thou fled? Speak in some bush. Where dost thou hide thy head? Thou coward art thou cracking to the stars, telling the bushes that thou lookst for wars. Yea, art thou there? Follow my voice. We'll join our men with you. He goes before me and still dares me on. When I come where he calls, then he is gone. The villain is much lighter healed than I. I fold fast, but faster he did fly that fall in my dark, uneven way. And here will rest me, come thou gentle bay, for but once thou show me thy gray light, I'll find Demetrius and revenge this fight. Ho, 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 coward, why comest thou not? Where art thou now? Come hither, I am here. Nay, then, thou mocks me. Thou shalt abide this dear, if ever I thy face by daylight see. Now go thy way. Faintness constraineth me to measure up my life on this cold bed. My day's approach look to be visited. O oh, weary night, O oh, long and tedious night, abate thy hour. Shine comforts from the east, and sleep sometimes shuts up sorrow's eye. Steal me a while from my known company. Yet but three, come on more, two of both kinds make a four. Here she comes, cursed and sad. Cupid is a knavish lad, thus to make poor females mad. Never <laughs> so weary, never so in woe. I can no further crawl, no further go. Here will I rest me till break of day. Heaven's shield, Lysander, they mean afraid. On the ground, sleep sound. I'll apply to your eye, gentle lover, right? 
musk roses in thy sleek, smooth head. I kiss thy fair lord's ears, my gentle joy. Where's pea Peas Blossom? Ready? Scratch my head, Peas Blossom. Where is Monsieur Cobweb? Ready. Monsieur Cobweb, good Monsieur. Get you your weapons in hand and kill me a redhead tumblebee and bring me the honey bag. Have a care the honey bag make not. Where is Monsieur Mustard Seed? Ready. Mom, give me your knee, Monsieur Mustard Seed. I pray you, leave your courtesy, good Monsieur. What do you will? Nothing but tell Calvary Cobweb to scratch. I must to the barber soon, Monsieur, for methinks I am models hairy about the face. <laughs> what? Wilt thou hear some music, my sweet love? I have a reasonable good ear in music. Let's have the tongs and the bone! Or say, sweet love, what thou desires to eat. Truly, I could munch your good, dry oats. Methinks I have a desire to a bottle of hay. Good hay, sweet hay hath no fellow. I have an adventurous fairy who shall seek the squirrel's hoard and fetch thee new nuts. I'd rather a handful or two of dried peas. But I pray you, let none of your people stir me. I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. Sleep thou, and I will wind thee in my arms. <laughs> Be gone, and be always away. Oh, how I love thee, how I dote on thee. Welcome, good Robin. Thou seest this sweet sight, for don't you turn out in pity. And now, happy boy, I will do this hateful imperfection of her eye, and gentle part. Take this transformed scalp from off the head of this Athenian swain, that <coughs> he awaken when the other two may all to Athens back again repair, and think no more of this night's accidents, but as the fierce fixation of a dream. But first, I will release the fairy queen. Fierce thou was want to see you, be as thou was wont to be. Diane's bud or Cupid's flower hath such force and blessed power. Now, my Titania, wake you, my sweet queen. <coughs> my Oberon, what visions have I seen? Methought I was enamored of an ass. <laughs> <laughs> Enough, my lord, you have enough. I beg the law, the law upon his head. 
They would have stolen away. They would, Demetrius, thereby to have defeated you and me. My lord, fair Helen told me of their self, of this their purpose hither to this wood, and I in fury followed them. Fair Helen and I fancy following me. But, my good lord, I wot not but what power, but by some power it is. My love to her me I melted as the snow. Seems to me now the object and pleasure of my eye is only Helena. To her, my lord, was I betrothed ere I saw Hermia. But like in sickness did I loathe this food, but as in health, come to my natural taste. Do I wish it, love it, long for it, and will forevermore be true to it. Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. Of this discourse we shall hear anon. Aegeus, I will to bear your will. For in the temple, by and by with us, these couples shall eternally be knit. Away to Athens, three and three. We'll hold a feast in great solemnity. Come, all go. These things seem small and indistinguishable. But since I see these things with parted eye, then everything seems double. So me thinks, as I have found Demetrius, like a jewel, my own and not my own. Are you sure that we are awake? It seems to me that yet we sleep, we dream. Do not you think the Duke was here and bid us follow him? Yea, and my father. And Hippolyta. And he did bid us follow to the temple. Why then, we are awake. Let's follow them, and by the way, let us recount our dreams. <laughs> to expound this dream. Methought I was, there is no man can tell what, methought I was, and methought I had, <laughs> but man is but a patched fool if he will offer to say what to me thought I had. The eye of man hath not heard, the ear of man hath not seen. Man's hand is not able to taste, his tongue to conceive, nor his heart to report what that dream was. <laughs> I shall get Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream, and it shall be called Bottom's Dream, because it hath no bottom. <laughs> I shall sing it at the latter end of the play before the Duke, and peradventure, to make it the more gracious, I shall sing it at her death. <laughs> Not a word of me. All I will say is, the Duke hath died. 
Get your overhead together. Be presently at the palace. Every man look over his part. For the short and the long is our play is preferred. No more words. Oh wait, go away. Wittiest partition I've ever heard discourse, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> 
already in snuff. I am weary of this noon. When he would change. It appears by slight indiscretion that he is in the wane, and yet in courtesy and in all reason we must stay in the time. Proceed, Moon. All I have to say is that the lanthorn is the moon. I, the man in the moon, this thorn bush my thorn bush, and this dog my dog. Why, all these things should be in the lanthorn, for all these things are in the moon. But silence, here comes this thing. <laughs> Dear friend, 
you don't need to make a man look sad. Be true, my heart, but I pity thy man. <laughs> Since the lion vile here hath deflowered, my dear, come tears, confound, outsword, and wound the path of Pyramus. I that left hath where the hearts are hot. Okay. 